Feel me? I'm ends with the lens. It's your boy Pet Mando. Man, today we got untold stories, man. Y'all not ready for this one. We got the cutty that's three C's down. You feel me? Real Hogan ah, High General. Sure. You dig what I'm talking about? It's a, you know, it's a, it's a privilege, man, to have him on the show, man, and you know, talk about some real untold stories, man. You feel me? Like direct in the flesh. You dig? Man, what's going down? How you doing, bro? I'm doing great, baby. Just to kick it off, bro, how'd you come up with the name Sugar Wolf, man? How'd that originate? I got named Sugar Wolf on the flute. If you know anything about Crest niggas, right? What we do is SIG. If you don't know what SIG in is, SIG in is capping, playing the dozens, making roasting. jokes. Yeah, roasting, all that shit. So I had a partner that moved to the Crest from Compton. So, you know, just on some Crest shit, that nigga didn't have no name. Didn't nobody give a fuck what his name was. When he moved to the Crest, that's what his name was. To this day, that nigga name is Compton. That's how the Crest moved. Where you from? That's your name. Yeah. You from uh, yeah. Alpine, nigga, you moved to the Crest, nigga, your name gonna be Alpine. Yeah. So, my nigga moved to the Crest from Compton, right? And you know, I fuck with him. You know, we fuck with him. Tough, that's my nigga. So, we with the joke shit. So, I be calling him all kind of, you know, Compton Crip jokes and shit. And one day he hit me back and said, oh, this nigga think he BG Sugar Wolf with the woo woo woo, right? So at the time I was playing football and we was playing Monterey. I was playing for City College in Frisco and we were playing Monterey. And I told their ass up in the first half. So coach was like, Norton, you can put on your street clothes. You ain't playing no more. So when I, 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 got, I could put on my street clothes, nigga, I put my Kango on, nigga. Comb my perm down, put my on. ponytail back in, went out. I'm like, look at these hoses, it's hoes out here. So I'm, I'm out there while my team playing the rest of the second half. I'm talking to the bitches. And the, I got my jersey on, so the bitches know, listen, I just rushed for 150 yards in the first Easy. half. I want y'all to still know this is who I am, number 34, the nigga that did that. So the bitches was on me and shit. And every time they asked me my name and shit, I'd be on some funny shit and be like, what? My name Big Daddy Sugar Wolf Pimp, <laughs> right? And them bitches was on it. So when it came time for the pick a rap name or whatever, I told Kyrie my rap name is Doobie. He was like, that's what you want? Just Doobie? That's it? I'm like, oh, okay, well shit. Doobie, aka Sugar Wolf Pimp. And I just ran with it. But first, Sugar Wolf was a joke. Right. You know what I mean? It wasn't no hood name. You know, every nigga from the crest know, that really know me, they know me as Doobie. Right. You feel me? Real motherfuckers, my family, my grandmama, my mama, my daddy, my mama named me Doobie. So, you know, my real nickname in the crest, whatever, is Doobie. Why she named me Doobie? Huh? Because when she got pregnant with me, that was the end of her joint. Mm -hmm. She okay. stopped smoking weed when right, she was right, pregnant. Right. So, you right. feel me? Doobie. Change your life. Doobie meant, you know, the end of the joint. So, when I got, when she got pregnant with me, that was the end of her joints, cause back then they smoked joints. Right. So my nickname was Doobie. My, you know, my whole family. You know, even right now, when it be a bitch or something, be like, I'ma call you Major. Everybody, call, I said, you call me Major. The real people go know you an alien. You must know me from school or somewhere else, right. cause everybody that really know me, yeah, they know me as Doobie. Right. But Sugar Wolf, that was a name that was like, you know, a, a joke. You feel me? And I, just to be funny, right. I took it and ran with it. And right. then, you know. So that came I, later on in life? Yeah. Oh, okay. But, you know, and I, what Sugar Wolf is today, 
come from a nigga seeing it and a joke and me being funny with my partner like right. nigga look what I made out that name that you was joking right, and dating. Right. Blew it up. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what you really when you drop that album, that Sugar Wolf album. What? 22? 22. Yeah. You, you was born in uh, Vallejo too? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was born in Vallejo, Country Club, Crestside, California. Came home from Kaiser, straight to the Crest. Right. Ain't never knew nothing but the Crest. Right. Had two grandmamas from the Crest, my daddy from the Crest, my mama from the Crest, both my granny from the Crest. So I grew up not knowing nothing but the Crest. Right. I was babysat in the Crest. Right. All that shit. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. One of my grandmamas stayed up the hill from my other grandmama. My mom and daddy had a house on Mark Street, so it wasn't nothing but crash shit for me growing right, up. Period, you know what period. I mean? So that's why I rep it the way I rep it. That's all I know. Right. I never lived nowhere else in Vallejo, you feel me, to tap in with. You know, like maybe I'm from the Crest and I lived over yeah. here to them niggas or whatever. It been, that, that's why when I say crash shit and no shit, that's exactly what I mean. Right. It could be nothing else. Right. Period. You feel me? If I yeah. in Vallejo, Vallejo niggas that know me, from other spots, from South Lil, Beverly Hills or whatever, they'll look at me as, nigga, you on some funny shit if you was anything but from the crest. Right. Because we only know you from the crest. Right. You feel me? So, you know, born and raised. So, before you was making music, you was playing ball. Baseball at six years old in Northern Little League. And I started playing Pop Warner at nine years old before I was Lil Pop Warner. I played a little basketball, GV, GVRD, you know what I'm saying, when I was younger in elementary. And then I played in, uh, for the Omega Boys Club. But I didn't really like basketball. Right. You feel me? I was a baseball, football nigga. Right. So, you know, I played, I was a dog. I mean, every sport I played, I was a dog in the shit. You right. know, my name was mentioned with the who's who in them sports. Right. So baseball, I started playing baseball at six years old, North Little Little League, and Pop Warner at nine years old before I left Pop Warner. Your first year playing football, that's when you knew you was dope? Or? Keep it 100. My first year at Pop Warner, my daddy, my daddy was my coach. You feel me? And my daddy was one of them niggas that was like, you not going to take my credit. Like, just because I'm the coach, right. I put my son in. So my first year of uh, baseball, my daddy had me on the bench. Right. My first year of football, mm -hmm. my daddy put me on defense while he coached offense to be like, nah, you're not going to make it like I'm trying to make my son the right. star. Right. So <clears throat> how I really got turned on in football as far as the offense, one of the starting running backs got hurt, and I was the backup. And once I came in, when he got hurt, it was over. I never... You know, from then on, it was, I ranked with all the starting running backs from then on. But my daddy tried to like downplay it to be like, you know, to show everybody, nigga, even this, this being this being my son, right. he gonna have to earn his spot. Right. You feel me? So, <clears throat> baseball, first year, I was, but the second year, that's when I turned on. Seven years old, baseball, I turned on. Football, I turned on from day one. They were saying you was hella fast. Like, how fast was you? How old was you running in your 40? I ran 4 three forty in jeans and socks, racing Bobby Brooks in high school. Honestly, bro, I don't think people understand that's gonna watch this, know how fast <coughs> that is. That's like, that's world-class speed right there. Bro. I didn't know how, I, four three, bro. I didn't know four how fast sure. it was. Right. But four I didn't four. know how fast it was because I wasn't the only nigga around here right. running that fast. Right. Mm. You had Marcus right. Bishops right. from the Crest running that fast. You had David Flowers right. running that fast. You know what I'm saying? You had numerous niggas running that. You had Ali Evans right. running that fast. Right. You know what I'm saying? If not faster than that. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know. That's some boys out here. Yeah, Vallejo yeah. bred athletes before right. the rap shit, right, right. the street shit. That's why, like, I feel Vallejo motherfuckers, as far as what they into, they attack it the same way they attack the sports. Right. You feel me? A lot of the Vallejo teams, we wasn't a big city, but the athletes that came from this city came to 
compete with real deal athletes from big cities. Right. So, yeah, you know, that transferred over from the athlete shit to the street shit, to the rap right. shit, to the whatever, you feel me? So, you know, the real niggas from Vallejo that come up through that chain, that's how they look at everything. You feel me? Like, oh, it's a competition. Right. You know what I mean? That I'm a place and I will not place last. Like, you feel me? Yeah. I'm a place. I might don't get first in everything. I'm gonna get first in something, something. but I ain't gonna get last in nothing. You feel me? I'm a place. So it's that mentality coming from the as far as the athletes, you know, that's where we come from. That was our era. And I feel a lot of that is lost right now because the younger generation, they don't really have sports as the outlet. You know what I mean? Right, right. We came from sports as the outlet and bled that outlet into other things that we was into. Right. You feel me? Even if it was the street. When niggas stopped playing sports, the niggas that played sports that went to selling dope, they sold dope like the same way they competed in the streets. I mean, in, in, the same way they competed in sports. Right. It was, you learned how to comp compete without complaining yeah. and crying. Right. If this man better than you, then you got to better yourself right. to be better than him. Right. You don't cry, you don't hate, right. you don't do none of that. You, you feel up, me? Man. We was we, we was right. built like that's real nigga shit. Right. You know what I mean? Real nigga shit ain't if this nigga knocking bitches and I ain't hating on him is an option. Right. Nah, nigga, I need to analyze my game, right. figure out why this nigga beat right. me and get better at what I'm doing right. so I can compete with shit. this nigga true because shit. I'm tired of this nigga knocking more bitches than me. <laughs> I'm tired of this nigga getting more money than me. Right. You feel me? So that's how it was with my era. You feel me? And and true enough, I can't blame the younger, younger generation for whatever they going through because by rights, it should be passed along from the older generation. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of the younger niggas that I fuck with, that's why I come from and, and fuck with them the way I fuck with them because I know how important the information is because I know how important it was when it was passed on to me. Right. You feel me? I come up under some of the Kevin Deans and, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, Ed, Ed, Ed Bonnerantz and shit, the, the, the dog niggas that came before me for the athletes. You know what I'm saying? And that was the first thing that you that that you tapped in with the athlete shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Before we had street dreams and shit, you, nigga, you had all these niggas from Vallejo that was looking at, nigga, can I make it in baseball? Can I make it in football? Can I make it in basketball? Can I make it in sports? You know what I'm saying? So you learn, like I said, you learned how to compete. And when you branched off from sports or whatever, carry that shit with you, you carry that into whatever field you went into. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, how many how many yards did you average in like your junior year once you got to like high school and then you started really started My high school out? junior year, I played linebacker. Oh, okay, you were smacking shit. Yeah, my court, my, my, my coach in here, he wasn't, he wasn't from Vallejo. Oh, okay. See, he, he didn't know the lineage yeah. that I came from right, right. for run, playing running back all through Pop Warner. He didn't know nothing about that. So my first year, I had to play wherever I could play right, right. to get on the team. Right. You feel me? I started off at outside linebacker, and it was like we 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 blew out a team our last game, and he put other motherfuckers in, and that's how I first got to run the ball in front of the coach. And he was like, "Ooh!" And then when we went from that game to the playoffs. I ran down a nigga that had a USC, USC scholarship. Next year, it was like, okay, we're gonna try Norton in the backfield, which wasn't new to me, it was new to him. Right. You feel me? So I was like, I'm, I'm right where, and I grew up playing fullback. So now that I'm a tailback, you know, which really my size was tailback all through Pop Warner, but my daddy made me play fullback just to be like, now nah, you gonna run the tough shit. You gonna learn how to run up the middle. You gonna learn how to hit niggas. You not gonna run from contact. You not gonna be out here trying to juke everybody and shit. Mm -hmm. So when I did become tailback, I was on my Bo Jackson shit. I had the speed to run away from you, but I wasn't scared to run you over. That's like this rap shit. You know, I got the look, the finesse of motherfucker, but I ain't never been scared to play that goon shit. You know, what I'm saying? I ain't never been scared to play the game of, of what you might call a ugly nigga. 
Right. I ain't never had a pretty nigga complex. Right. You feel me? I sport a black eye, busted lip, like a like a like a motherfucking medal of war, nigga. Right. Like, yeah. You know, it ain't about. I don't gotta win every war, but long as any nigga know, nigga, I come to compete. Right. You not gonna get an easy win dealing with me. So that's how it. That's how I look at everything. You consistently played sports for your whole life since you were a little kid and shit. Like, what what you think made you go to go the other route? Because I mean, you you were showing us the videos, bro. You was killing shit, you know. Honestly, I made that choice at a time where the crest was handicapped. Uh-huh. My neighborhood was handicapped. You feel me? Mac Dre was in jail. You know, at the time, PSD was in YA. Another yeah. rapper from the crest. Another rapper from the Crest, Mag Lee, was locked up. Another rapper from the Crest, Coolio, mm -hmm. was locked up. All the Crest had as a voice at the time was Mac Maul. Yeah. So I felt, you know, even though me and Maul was from the same crew, Maul got a different speech to give him than what I got to give him. And I felt the only way what I got to say is going to get represented or heard is if I do it. So at the time, really, it was like I signed my scholarship with intentions to do both, yeah. you know, rap and play football. But I didn't know at that time scholarship athletes at the college level could not get paid. Yeah. So once it was on record that I was getting paid a certain amount of money, I was in conflict oh, okay. with the, with the, the room, contract yeah. of my scholarship because I was getting a full ride scholarship to Washington State, okay. which they was paying for my whole full ride to go to school. Uh -huh. So I wasn't supposed to be on record getting no money and I had just signed for X amount of dollars signing a deal with Young Black Brother Records. Yeah. You feel me? So it was like, it was either you gonna get that money back or you gonna owe the school that money. I was like, I'm not giving shit back and I'm not owing nobody. Yeah, yeah. You know what, coach, bro, I'm not coming. It's over. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Plus, I felt far as the rap shit, at that point, I was seeing niggas from my neighborhood really making it in rap. Okay, I, yeah, let me get it, let me get let me get a chance to run the ball. Yeah, yeah. You know, hand me the ball. Let me let me do what I could do. And I'm holding myself, I've been holding myself back because at that point, it was a lot of niggas that knew that I rap. Mm -hmm. But it was like a lot of niggas didn't really want to fuck with Doobie because it was like, man, that nigga play football. He ain't worried about no rap shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But I wanted to be heard. So it was like, shit, you nah, heard shit. Yeah, you heard shit. I wanted to do. Show, you know? you feel me? When did you start making music? Like, while you was playing football? Or when, like, when nah, did you start? My first raps got wrote in, um, in, in elementary school. Mm -hmm. Me and my niggas, Tata, Nunu, uh, Fat Dad, Durante Hollins, we all rap for the uh, poetry contest at elementary, at Elsa Wiedemann Elementary School. Right, right. We was like, we was the first niggas, you know how they had a poetry contest where you gotta go find a poem and remember your poem. Right. Man, we wrote raps and battle rapped for the for the poetry contest. Did y'all win you won? Yeah. That's <laughs> you know, was ranking. Mr. Swagger class. Right, right. Fucked over Mr. Cook class. Ta Ta and them couldn't see us. Uh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you go So there's some oh, that's always been there that just you feel me finally just went full in with it after you put the pig skin down. And when, so when did you and Mac Dre and everybody start clicking together? When did you really start fucking with Dre and Mary and all the cutties? Based on that, it was like levels. Levels to the game. You know, you had the my nigga, the, the Thriller North era level. You had the Mac Dre Romper Room level era. You had the, you know, like right between them was the Mac era. You feel me? So I came up in the Crew Thing Sesame Street era. We was both two crews that was up under the romper room, so we watched they whole evolution. They was like four years older than us. Right. So, you know, I was a nigga at the junior high school, knowing that Mac Dre was at the high school killing them on the talent show. Come on. You know what I'm saying? I was a nigga that we went to the Omega Boys Club to watch Mac Dre shows to the point where up and coming rappers like me, Mac Maul, Young Lay, 
Ironic, you know what I'm saying? Another rapper from Belial. All us came up being open and asked for when Mac Dre rapped at the boys club. You know what I'm saying? So that was, even before that, that was my, my first meeting Mac Dre. It wasn't really the hoopla of Mac Dre. Because you got a kid, a baby, a crest baby. I'm knowing all the niggas that romper room niggas and you know Mac Dre niggas before romper room. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in the church with Ronnie Wags, Ray Wags, E. B. Greg Bowler. All us went to the same church. You know what I'm saying? All us played little league together, Kilo. All us played Pop Warner shit together from six, seven, eight, nine years old. So when Mac Dre come to the crest, it's not at that point for me, Mac Dre. Right. It's who is this nigga? Right, right. You feel me? This is an unknown face to me. You know what I mean? It ain't to the even to the point of a look up to. Right. It's already older niggas that age, born and raised from the crest, that I done grew up looking up to. So even when Dre first got to the crest, it wasn't a look up. It was a who is this nigga? Right. You know what I mean? Even when Dre was battling Reek Daddy, I knew a Reek Daddy. I, Reek Daddy was one of the OG rappers I looked up to, so in the Mac Drake Reek Daddy battle, I sided with Reek Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, nigga, Reek on this nigga. Woo the woo woo. But then as Mac Drake began to blossom, even when it was rough for Mac Drake, you feel me? Because it ain't always been just peachy peachy. Right, right. Mac Dre ain't always been the Mac Dre that you know about as far as like the whole crest been behind Mac Dre. Mac Dre done went through the hating, got beat up, car got took, car got burnt up, all this shit. So when he went through that, that's how he got his respect in the crest to the point where niggas looked up to him now like, nah, bruh, bruh really from here and ain't no punk. Then been to the pen for here, you know what I'm saying? All the shit. But even before he went to the pen on the rap shit, when he first got on, he was reaching out. He was open arms to the younger generation, to the Mac Malls, PSD, Doobies, you know what I'm saying? He was Mac Lees. He was open to all of that. You feel me? So I, I, I could say I like first met him, like maybe I was, what, eighth, eighth grade? Something like that, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, what, like 13, around that, and I, I figured he was like 17, you know what I'm saying? But even that was just meeting the motherfucker. It wasn't more of the, whoa, right. we one mile, you know what I'm saying? Okay, when it got to the point where they romper room, they crew thing, they Sesame Street, which was our crew, then it was a different respect, cause it was we in the field. Even though we young niggas, niggas you niggas got funk with four, five years older than us. Nigga, if we ain't tripping with them same niggas y'all tripping with, we tripping with they, they little brothers. Period, period. Who the rock got funk with? Right. This part of town, they part of town, anything that age, we tripping with them. You feel me? So it was like a mutual respect thing. So as we got older, you know, you know when you when you get past that age where, you know, like say if you was my big brother and you four years older than me and we done went through them years of, I go get my big brother. Mm -hmm. Till we hit the point where, fuck that age difference, nigga, that's my brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ain't no go get your big brother. You know, it's handle your business on the spot. If your big brother wanna come, whatever. When it got to that, it was a mutual respect, you feel me, between, you know, them three crews in the crest. That was our era. That was our war party. The romper room, cool thing, strictly says, set the street, you feel me, and that's how we moved. So it was like, that's when it really tied in. Right. You know what I mean? That's when it was like a deeper relationship with Mac Dre because he knew what these younger niggas brought to the table. You feel me? These young niggas is in the field, nigga. We 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 moving. 
You feel me? The, 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 the Sesame Street niggas is moving. The crew thing niggas is moving. It ain't just the romper room, nigga. You know if y'all get into something, nigga, we coming too. We go to a house party, uh, Continentals, dance, whatever the fuck, whatever it was. If a nigga trip with y'all, nigga, he trip with us. And we might, at that time, we might not be nothing but 16. You niggas is 20 and shit, so what though? Still with the shit. We own them, Period. whatever. You know what I mean? So I, 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 I kind of like what Matt Mac Dre on a real deal where it count level met him maybe like 15. I knew of him as the, at 13 and shit, but it was a different, you know, like I say, at 13 and shit, it was like, okay. okay. Who is this nigga? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, what's going on with bro? I heard he rap or whatever, but I, and I wasn't even in the really following rappers at that time, so that didn't mean shit. Right. right. You know, I don't give a fuck that you rap. Right. You know what I mean? At that point, it was like you know, it was more. We were still waiting for what what did it when the Mac album. When you first went into a, 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 a record store and seen the Mac shit on the shelf, that's what sparked the spark for Crest, nigga, because now you really knew, oh, we really could make it. Right. Up until this point, you might have heard niggas with demos and all of this shit, but till you see go into the shit and you see the Mac shit on the shelf mm-hmm. and it's NWA, uh, EPMD, nice. Uh, Rodney Owen, Joe Cooley, and all these type of motherfuckers, and he on the shelf with them. That's when you felt, oh, nigga, we, you really can make it in this shit. Yeah. Up until then, it was just man demo shit. The nigga rap around town and all of that shit. Okay, the nigga rap, no, nigga, no, this nigga really rap, rap. Yeah, right. And just so happened, I think I was like in eleventh grade when the Mac got killed. You feel me? And in that short amount of time. You know, the steps that Mac Dre took to take what the Mac left, to take that to another level before he got sent to the feds, it was like, phew. you know, really that, that's what set the stage for Mac Maul. You know what I mean? And, and Maul was my, like my younger nigga by a year, maybe two, you feel me? But the doors that was opened by that chain of command is what put the battery in the in the back of the rest of us. You know what I'm saying? You know From the possible. Mac, the Mac Dre, the Mac Mall, them doors that was open, put the battery pack in the back of the doobies, PSDs, and everything else that came after. Like, nah, nigga, they really ready to pay some niggas, nigga, if you serious about your shit. Yeah, right. You feel me? So. When you make your first song with Dre? When you came off in the feds? Mm-hmm. And that was based on, he was fucking with Kyrie. And I happened to be fucking with Kyrie. My album was the album that was in the works at the time, right when he came home. So it was like, ooh, the Cuddy doing his thing. Doobie then took steps while I was gone. Nigga, I, when I left, Doobie was football. Nigga, do be a boy in this rap shit right now. This your album? Let me hear this song. Oh, and, and you finna give me a chance to shine on this right when I'm coming home? Yeah. Cutty, I got you. You feel me? So the first, and that wasn't even a song with us. That was like, Cutty, do your thing. I don't even got to be on the song. Do your thing. You feel me? On my first album. And, and, and he shining, you know. I could tell him cut off a fish wagon. You know what took what I'm that shit and ran with it. What's the furthest y'all ever went out to go do a show? Furthest I went was like Kentucky, Indianapolis, and God, shit. Damn, Kentucky? They fucking with the Bay Area music in Kentucky? Yeah, they, and that, that was off my first album. That was back then. And that was when shows was like, you know, I just find out about a show. Yeah. Later on, it was like, you know, that, this was before the the, the did shit. No, no, for sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Before, before the this is when the sugar was. For yeah, us. this was before the the us movement. Yeah. But, you know, that's like when we first went to Kansas City. We mm-hmm. wasn't even expected to get accepted at that point. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We was on stage in Kansas City, hearing these motherfuckers knowing a nigga song word for word 
-huh. And we trying to stay professional, but really we on stage in the middle of performing, well, looking at each other like, Cuddy, is like, you seeing how they yeah, doing all that shit? Yeah. You feel right. me? And it was a show. We was on the on, on the show with I think E40. Uh, uh, damn, I can't forget the nigga name. <laughs> Lil Kiki from Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, Sugar T was on it. It was three times crazy. It was us. Can't really remember who else, mm -hmm. but that's how we like really logged in okay. with three times crazy. At, at that point, it was like you know, we in full cahoots with y'all. Y'all in full cahoots with us. We want y'all coming on stage with us. We y'all we coming on stage with y'all, and that's where the really link between us to kick the sneak. And, you know what I mean? You're traveling yeah. to different places all together, so it's kind of like Bay Area click up. Because I mean, you out there yeah. in Kentucky and shit. Off top, mean? off top. It's it's like, like, I mean, you know. When the Bay Area go somewhere, it be so like culture shock difference. You ain't got no choice but to, when you see another Bay Area nigga artist or whatever somewhere else, it's like, bro, are oh, you out here too? Yeah, we over here, <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we right. finna go tonight, we, we at that. We lit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I mean, I, but I figure it's like that with anybody. No, right? You take some Memphis niggas and bring them out here, or some New York niggas and bring them too, out here. Once up. they tap right. in with their own, it's gonna be a different. No, you know what I mean? Sure. So. You, you don't remember any stories where y'all just got like received like negatively, or they fucking hating on y'all? Like, war stories from the fucking tours from back in them eras? Not, 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 not. We, we to be honest, we ain't never been received negatively. Yeah. But we didn't have war stories. I mean. That was the Peel era. Mm -hmm. So even the war story might not even been them yeah, receiving was, us negatively. That was us was, on drugs and we was on some fight and fuck drugs. Yeah, yeah, hell if, yeah. you ain't, if, if you ain't a bitch trying to fuck, then you a nigga trying to fight. What's happening? Yeah, so yeah. it was like a lot of the shit we might get into. Nigga, we, we was taking shit the wrong way on purpose because we was high on yeah, pills yeah, yeah. and didn't mind fighting. Making true TV, like whoop this yeah, fool's ass real quick. Yeah. You know I mean? Plus it was like Animal Planet, nigga. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the bitches see a nigga win the fight, that's who they fucking. Right. Hmm. So it was like, nigga, what? Yeah, what? Right? Nigga, we're playing, bro. <laughs> nigga, when did hiking no like come about? Definitely this far away from home. No, for sure, for you sure. So, you know, that's what time we was on. When, when y'all make hyphy like? Hyphy like? Dre was dead. Dre was dead, and uh, Jonas from Wash House had some uh, Mac Dre verses. And I was like, man, I got a lot of young niggas from the crest that need to get put on. So let's make a compilation. And the compilation was the 3C game plan. And it was two Dre verses that Jonas had that he was like, here, doobie. I know you want Dre shit on your shit. And we crafted that whole song around what Dre said. Rest in peace, Dre. Rest in peace, my cousin Feed, sure. because them is the other two niggas on the song. And Dre, Feed sounds similar to Dre, so a lot of people don't know that the second verse is not Mac Dre. That's another up and coming rapper from the crest that ended up getting killed named Feed, one of my cousins. And we made that song based on Dre verse. That's why if you listen to the songs, if you listen to the verses, the similarity in every verse. Uh, back in Kansas City, or was it Mississippi? Mm -hmm. Back in January, or was it February? You feel me? Yeah, Everything was based on, that's how we could lock it together. Then I'ma do the hook to lock it all together. Right. It's all hyphy like, my type B like, you feel me? So we made, how you feel like after Dre was dead? It's crazy. That was a black for sure. Um, what about For Myself? That's like one of my favorites. You know top favorites. That's funny. Cause Dre was living and Dre was at the time and Dre was fucking with Riri. And Riri had a partner that sing. And when she first started singing the hook for For Myself, it was funny cause we high. So I keep spinning to the back, like, cut it. The bitch voice sound like it's ashy, bruh. Bitch need to boil some lotion and drink the lotion, my yeah, nigga, right. right? So we being funny, right? And then when we trip on what she's singing, mm -hmm. right? I want you for myself, mm -hmm. right? When it comes time to write the verse, I'm like, oh, for real? I'm finna write my verse like, 
Bitch, you got me fucked up. You, with that ashy voice, got the nerve to want me for yourself? That's why if you listen to the song, right? If you listen to the song in the bit in the beginning, that's why I say, bitches, you crazy. Yeah, right. You feel me? I'm a cold bow cat. A hoe should know that. Shitty off titty and dope as Prozac. You feel me? I'm going in. But I'm I'm starting it off with. Bitches, you crazy? What the fuck you mean? You want me for yourself. You, you better let me get around to these hoes, bitch. You ain't, you know, that but that type of flavor. Added to our music, you know what I'm saying? And it was like when she first started singing, this was before her voice got layered and started sounding right. Mm -hmm. When she first started singing, mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm attacking that shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> How you gotta say that? I want you for myself, for oh myself. Yeah. <laughs> you Yo, doobie. can't yeah, right. quit no one else, no one else. What is he? He's a cold pole cat. Look, you man. should know that. Shitty up, titty, and dope as Prozac. Hey! <laughs> Spin a dick in your brain. Please believe me. You don't know what that means. Spin a dick in your brain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You ever see? Hey, hey, look, look, look. Like we said in the crest. Like, like we said in the crest, right? We got a term in the crest for retarded. Right? Yeah. It's called soft head. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. We right. head soft. Yeah. So that we means soft head. You got a dick. Well, I spit a dick right yeah. there because that That's thing's soft. soft. I, I don't want to point it in there, but spit a dick in your brain. What? What? That's man, right. that nigga. What? What the so, fuck is you hollering? Who this right here, dude? Who this? This is my nigga, my yeah. big bro, my bunky, nigga, my mentor, all of that. Nigga, this is baby Mark. This is my nigga, man. nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this is my bunky, man. Yeah. This is bunky, man. Hey, bunky, bunky. 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 That's all, all you do is work out. Yeah. Bunky. When the feds came and got bunky. Me, and me and my nigga was in there 18 months not giving a fuck about nothing. Nothing. Not the Nuffer. team. Look what they said. North McFarland. Still, uh, what was it? Look, look, look. When they first said, <laughs> Norton, McFarland, CL28. Oh, no, we went in the freeze. We, 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 we went in there, right? We went in the cell. The, the goddamn vent was blowing too much. Man, a frozen pizza. Only thing the in there was a dictionary. I yeah, grabbed the dictionary and, went in and walked out. Cell. And we went in cell 29 and told the police, man, it's too cold. We going in here. And they just, oh, that guy, we just, man, we going in we there. We going in here, man. That shit freezing in there. We not Cell going in there. 29, look, it was 229. 229, Sacramento yeah. County. We stayed yeah. in there 16 months. Look, the, 18. Toilet, the toilet has so much fur. Look, look, fur look, in it. Look, look, look. Fur. Look, you look, ever seen a toilet with fur in it? A with burn. a perm in it. Chinese fur. <laughs> with a perm in it. With a perm in it. Fungus. Fungus. Yeah. Moss. Yeah. It had yeah. moss. Randy yeah. moss was yeah. in there. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we got that out. Yeah. Yeah. Clean yeah. and yeah. 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 we gonna die. Do we got us for nothing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they got us for nothing. <laughs> hey, 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 we in them. Hey, hey, oh yeah, man. Next, next, next tragic thing after that, a man from Sacramento shitted in the shower. Damn, oh, that was the yeah. joke. For three months. He shit it. He just shit. Cause, cause Sacramento, yeah. when they in jail, in jail, Sacramento, I think they, they let you out for an hour, then you can't go back in. They lock us go. Uh, and then you, you only getting out for an hour, so you better go out. Tears out. Did you make that song with Mad Dre called Global? Oh, Global? Global, we made it. Uh, damn, I can't remember the nigga studio here on uh, off, off, off behind behind Tennessee Street. But that was a a, a song for a Dre album. He was like, Cuddy, I need you to do a hook for us. I'm like, I got you, my nigga. I, I, shit, I can't remember what year or nothing like, like that that we made Global. But Global was like, you know, uh, I, we made Global really around the making amends with the other side of town. Okay. Before that point in time, Niggas from the crest wasn't rapping with no be legit, none of that shit. Right, right. You feel me? And at that point, you know, niggas was beginning to make amends. You feel me? As far as B look, 
Lil Bruce. Niggas that sat down to the table and found a common ground. Motherfucker had, hadn't found a common ground with 40. Uh-huh. You feel me? And even with, at that point, I was standoffish with a common ground mm-hmm. with a Lil Bruce and, 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 I mean, and, and Bila. Cause I was still like stuck between Nigga, my pledge of allegiance to the crest, nigga. Fuck this rap shit. Nigga, regular niggas on some crest shit ain't cool with over there. Nigga, I don't give a fuck about no rap shit. Right. Nigga, I still got to be able to go home, nigga. I don't give a fuck about no on some rap shit, we cool. Nah, nigga, on some street shit, nigga, I gotta be cool. Cause if this rap shit flop, I always got to be able to go home, cause that's all I know. Mm-hmm. All I know is the crest. So at that point, that was the point where Niggas really start being out, being in, in in similar situations with niggas to the point where, oh, okay, be little papa thing, nigga. Be little cool nigga. Lil Bruce, little papa thing, nigga. All these niggas fuck with us, nigga. Oh, it's good. We, we fuck with it like that. Okay, cool. I can fuck with this nigga. But up until then, it wasn't the personal meets. Whatever the fuck, where I knew a nigga personally to deal with a motherfucker person based on, you know, up until that point, it was nigga Bela the click, nigga fuck the click. Mm-hmm. You know, I came up on Mac Dre, fuck the click. All them fools suck my dick. I'm gonna rap real slow so you can understand me. Talk real bad about the crippled granny. That's what I came up on, nigga. So it was like, nigga, I don't give a fuck about not giving a fuck about them. Right. Fuck them. Nigga, it's crushed. Nigga, I'm from here, and I don't even knock a nigga from being there that's on some fuck Mac Dre or fuck whatever. Yeah. Nigga, fuck the crest. That's what you need to be on, because you from over there. Yeah. That's what I expect from you. You feel me? Right. But when we made Global, that was all them songs, Global, and, and the song, uh, where Miami on the hook, I'm, I'm Sally Valley selling dank beers. What it is, what it, it is, what it is, what it is. is. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, that was the beginning of the, of the, of the you know. So what, 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 kept, what kept the two sides separate? Just, it was just. Bro, it was y'all just. just didn't fuck with each other. It was just, just like that. Yeah. It was just like that. You know what I mean? And I mean, being from Vallejo, I mean, I don't want to put it on thick, but I mean, you know, being a crush nigga, nigga, you grow up. Like, you know, when we grew up, it was like, nigga, once you pass Tennessee Street, nigga, everything over there don't fuck with you. And it's shit on this side of town that don't fuck with you. But it was cool like that. We didn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Nigga, you from, you from the crest, you grew up funking with everything across town. You know what I mean? You might got respect for certain niggas. Yeah. Okay, he a real nigga from over there, but he from over there, nigga. Nigga got funk with South Vallejo. Nigga got funk with Beverly Hills. Nigga got funk with Millersville. But that nigga, nigga, he a real one. When you go up against him, you better be ready to go because he gonna give it back to you. You feel me? And that's where, like, as we got older, the respect came because you had to respect a warrior, a real crip, respect the real blood. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he know it ain't no just because I'm a crip, I'm going to go get on him because he a blood. Nah, nigga, you better bring your best because he one of them bloods and he going to be ready to give it back to you. Right. Go fucking with him bullshitting and you going to get nigga, your clock clean. Right, period. You feel me? And it was niggas like that from South Hill. It was niggas like that from Beverly Hills. It was niggas like that from Millersville. It ain't like because you from the crest, nigga. And it got to the point where in Vallejo, it got to a point where other niggas from Vallejo, nigga, it was a strike in Vallejo just to stand up to the crest. It was a strike in Vallejo just to do something to the crest. Especially when the bank robbery shit hit and it was this many crest niggas in jail. So these niggas' numbers ain't even up. You feel me? Niggas slide through there shooting shit. Nigga really on that gangster shit like, nigga, fuck the crest, nigga. And true enough, it was crest niggas that was, you know what, fuck this shit, I'm moving to sack. I'm moving to here. I'm going to there. So it was like, you know, that's when it was like, okay, now just being from the crest ain't just no, 
you know, hey, I'm from the crest. <laughs> Cause it was a it was a time where you could be like, I'm from the crest, and that meant something. Niggas gonna back up off you. Now it's like, oh, you from the crest? What's happening, nigga? You, right. you really gonna get out about right. your shit? So what I grew up as a young nigga, nigga, you know, even right now, when I say crest shit and no shit, that's what I grew up on as a young nigga. I'm not gonna rap nothing. I'm not gonna cling to nothing more than I cling to the crest. You feel me? And that's just how it is. But at that point, it was on some serious shit, like on some trip shit. Right. You know what I mean? So I, at that point, I didn't have an understanding for, you know, it was and, and, and growing up with the sports. Sports put me in contact with other niggas from other neighborhoods where my niggas from the hood that didn't, they, they parents didn't have money to play Pop One. They didn't have money to play Big Roof or Lil League that would put they parents didn't have money to put them in a sports that would put them into interaction with other kids from around Vallejo. Wow. So you could know this nigga fuck with it just like I do. This nigga look at shit just like I do. Sports put me in a position where I had a respect for certain South Vallejo niggas, certain Millersville niggas, certain Beverly Hills niggas, certain niggas from any other part of Vallejo because I seen that competitor in him from the sports. You feel what I'm saying? But as we hit a certain age, now niggas, it ain't about sports. It's niggas said fuck sports, niggas tripping, funking. It's easier for you to funk with a nigga that you don't know. You feel me? Yeah. Now, if I done played sports with you, you done been on my team. Yeah. I might have spent the night at your house in South Carolina. Yeah, sure. I might have spent the night at your house in Beverly Hills. Spend the night at your house in Millersville. I fuck with you like that. Your mama know me. My mama and them know you. It's a different dynamic in funking with you. But I can't expect you to say fuck your niggas because I don't know your niggas. I don't know your niggas, mama, like that. If my niggas come to get on your niggas, I might be like, oh, that's my nigga. Nigga, we can't get on him, nigga. Or at least nigga one-on-one -on -one with that nigga. Right. Nigga, you gotta thump one-on-one -on -one with that nigga. Because if we jump that nigga or whatever the fuck, that nigga mama finna be calling my mama like, what, what the fuck is up? Right, right. Your son is spending night out of my house. What the, what, what, we didn't both bought punch for the pop team. <laughs> what, what, what the fuck is your kid on? Right. All this type of shit. That's how tight knit Vallejo niggas came up. So now it's different with the sports shit took out. You got young niggas that don't know. Nigga, you could do whatever to a nigga you don't know. Right. You got niggas 15, nigga ready to kill a nigga, nigga. I don't know that nigga. Right. And that's how it was with me. I, I didn't know that nigga. I don't give a fuck what I'm gonna do to that nigga. There, there's no repercussions I, that I give a fuck about. You feel me? But if it's the one where, God damn, when you look back at the Certain South Vallejo niggas. I know that nigga from Little League, from 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 Pop Warner, from Babe Ruth. Nigga, my daddy know that nigga. My granny know that nigga. Granddad, grand, all that shit. Niggas gonna be repercussions, family. Even if I snuck that nigga, my grandmama gonna be in the house. Mm, <laughs> that's crazy. Somebody didn't kill such and such grandson. This shit is just get, and you the nigga that done it. You feel me? That's what had Vallejo kind of fucked up. You feel me? So I mean, even, even still, that's why really Vallejo niggas a fight. That shooting shit came later on. Niggas a fight out here. You feel me? Yeah. Crest nigga get into it with a South Vallejo nigga. Crest nigga might have whooped that nigga that night. South Vallejo niggas would be at the Crest Park next morning, nigga. Where, what's the name at? Bro, I need that one-on-one -on -one back. And you better be ready. What? Who? Hey, Cuddy. Such and such them out there. He say, y'all got into it last night. One-on-one. -on -one. Nigga, they at the Crest Park finna fight one-on-one. -on -one. That was Vallejo shit. And it was respected. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's different. It's different now. But, you know, time grow. And, and, and things change. But, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just talking about the era that I'm from. You know, we try to pass on some of them morals, but some of that shit cannot be passed on because these young niggas ain't came up through the chain of command that we came up. And you gotta respect that. And at some point, 
I'm 45 years old right now. I might look 30 or something. You know what I mean? But, I mean, you got to realize at some point, you got to move out the way, nigga, and move out the way for the up and coming. These niggas got to govern their shit how they govern their shit, how we govern our shit when we was 30, when we was in our 20s. I can't be the OG nigga moving like I'm really, the, you can't be a shot caller ranked nigga moving like you are in the field nigga. And you got to play your rank. You feel me? So some of them younger generation niggas, some niggas our age got to back up nigga. You can't get, you can't hate the game. You got to let the game play out how it go. You feel me? The game was like that for us. But the game is like that for them. So some of the shit, you know, a lot of motherfuckers get at me like, Shug, how you look at this? And these young niggas doing this and this, this and that and that. You know, bro, that's the game. Evolve with it or get the fuck out of it. Yeah. If you're not going to evolve with it and you got a problem with how it's evolving, get the fuck out the way, my nigga. Right. You know, if you ain't got the win to keep running the race, sit down on the sidelines, nigga. Because <laughs> some of these young niggas is winded up, nigga. Period. And if you ain't ready to move like that, nigga, get the fuck out the way because you can't throw no flag like, oh, I was ready to fight that nigga on a one on one and he pulled out a gun. That's the game he play. Right. Yeah. You can't tell a shooter to fight if that's what he do. You feel me? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, but at the same time, if you a shooter, then best believe niggas gonna deal with you. Once it's known you a shooter, they gonna right. deal with you at a shooter. You, you might can't get no fight, because they know you a shooter. Yeah. So, ain't no, you, you, once you get your shooter stripes, you might as well hang up that fighting shit, because ain't nobody gonna fight you, because they feel if they lose, you gonna go to that gun, so they gonna try to beat you to the gun, bro. So, if that's what you want, if you a nigga, even if you a fighting nigga, and they know you a get off first, niggas gonna try to beat you to getting off. If I know you a fighting nigga, and I know if a nigga to talk, hey, poop, you right. get off on me, right. I know that's what you do, right. then I, why should I talk to you? Right, period. As soon as I feel it's a problem, I'm gonna take off. Right. So it's the same thing. You know, so, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It ain't even really crazy, it's just the evolution of the game. Right. And if you ain't really, a student of the game, then you're gonna get ran over by the game. Period. So, just to derail it a little bit from that, what does that T mean on your chest? What does that mean to you? You really gonna ask me that? Yeah, I'm a, I really I really want you to explain to the people nigga, what does that mean T to you. T can't, can't rep nothing but this, nigga. It's what it is. This is what it is. <laughs> it's what you it feel is. Me? You feel me now? If you wanna ask me, what this mean, you know, based on what this T mean for us, this, this is a culture started by, you know, this is a pill culture. It started by the culture of ecstasy pills. It started by, you know, ecstasy, the power of ecstasy pills took niggas that would not even dance in the motherfucking party. Niggas that are just gonna stand on the wall in the party ready to get at a bitch or fight. Nigga, this pills made niggas dance, made niggas, you know, open up niggas mental to other shit. The, the, the T represent that culture. The shit that'll make a nigga jump the fuck out of his car while his car is rolling and jump on the goddamn top and dance <laughs> and don't give a fuck and no, my car ain't finna wreck any shit. Yeah. And, and, and the same nigga that if I come outside and you leaning on my car, I'm ready to fight you, yeah. but I don't give a fuck about six niggas standing on the roof of my car while my car rolling, and I'm on the hood, and we gigging, yeah, nigga, whatever. It's a culture, you feel me? It's a specific point in time that we grew up in, you know what I mean? That I, I was blessed to be a part of, that a lot of people was blessed to be a part of, the theist culture, the hyphy culture, the, the, whatever. Because it was a time where I was like, hyphy movement, nigga, that ain't what we on. Right. Nigga, a movement could stop. But since that's what they named it, that's what it was labeled as, we could say the hyphy movement, 
the theater movement, whatever. That T represent what me we what we mean to that culture. Mm -hmm. Because in plenty places, ecstasy, theaters, pills, whatever the fuck was called, whatever them niggas called it. Beans, pellets, skittles, whatever the fuck they called them. But for little niggas called them thizzles. Theaters for show. You feel me? Right. And that was some Vallejo shit. And Dre got on that like, nigga, that's what I'm finna name my label. So it, 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 was, it was a Bay Area thing that Vallejo put they spin on that it took. And it was a big thing for Vallejo because it was the acceptance of Vallejo. It was a time when Vallejo wasn't even accepted into the Bay Area, bro. So it was like, the Bay Area was open arms to what Vallejo brought. So it was a big thing to us. And that's why we rep that T and that's what that T mean. You know, the, the T ain't just on no crest shit. Right. It's with the crest, what Vallejo bring to the, to the Bay Area movement. Because what we doing up under the T or up under the Thiers or whatever, ain't nothing different than what Oakland niggas doing when they get on. Right. Frisco niggas doing when they get on. Richmond niggas doing when they get on. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was a mutual respect thing. It was a at the round table thing. You feel me? And it was respected. That's why, you know, when Dre died and Kilo took hold to the wheel, he kept the movement going and broadened the movement to where it wasn't just the crest. It wasn't just Vallejo. You seen Frisco niggas with this. <clears throat> you seen Oakland niggas with this. <clears throat> Richmond niggas with this. <clears throat> niggas one mind. And I ain't gonna say with this because all of these niggas brought a different component to this to build what it was. You feel me? And that's what we was. Right. You feel me? That's what this represented. When this hit another city or whatever, when you seen them niggas coming, you ain't just seen Vallejo niggas coming, you seen Richmond, Oakland, Pittsburgh, nigga, uh, uh, Pittsburgh. uh, Frisco, nigga, you seen one mob, nigga. I might don't even know what these Pittsburgh niggas that's here tonight then got into, but whatever they got into, I'm into. These Oakland niggas might don't even know what Doobie as a Vallejo nigga that got into tonight, but whatever I got into tonight, nigga, they into, nigga. And we moving one mile. That's what that team means. You feel me? The unification of the Yeah, area. it was the Pledge of Allegiance to the mile. You on. feel me? It was a bigger thing. It was like when you go to the prison, nigga, and nigga get get get, get put on and learn about nigga this bank card, nigga. Mm -hmm. You feel me? This was a rap bank card, nigga. This what it is. Let alone you better not take us out of state. Oh gosh. You feel me? Yeah. So I mean, that's what it means, and it's all still a representation and a respect to Mac Dre. Because it was Mac Dre vision. It was Mac Dre vision to build something for a Bay Area Bay Area legacy. You know what I mean? To be which what it is. Everybody know this dear shit is a legacy left by Mac Dre that niggas is Carrying on, you got sucker niggas try to carry on Mac Dre names, Clout Chase and all that shit, the whatever, fuck them. We talking about far as niggas that really, really rep this deal shit. Not the niggas that, bro, what is he doing? He fucking it up. The real niggas that really like, you can see, bro, he really with the shit. Right. That's what he repping. That's why you see a difference between what he do right. and the next nigga do. Come what on. he do come from the heart right. because it's in him, right. not on him. Right. Hello. You feel me? Yeah. Another nigga can put this sweatshirt on and it's on him. A real nigga that T is in him. So he gonna rep it different. You feel me? So yeah. what this mean, and like from a nigga like me, like I told you, when I first met Mac Dre, it was like, who is this nigga? So to see a nigga that I met from, who is this nigga? To I'm rocking with this nigga and for this nigga like this and watch this nigga whole journey. You feel me? And was part of it, was willing to put my life on the line for it. Nigga, I died for this nigga. Cause I done been in situations where 
it might ain't, ain't been a situation where I knew at that point in time, nigga, that I was willing to die for it. <clears throat> but when you look back at the situation, <clears throat> a situation that you done made your way out of, you didn't know going into that situation that you was putting yourself in a situation that you could die for. Mm -hmm. Nigga, the same way the night Drake died on some fear shit. He didn't know what he was putting himself in line for. Right. And he gave his life for this shit. And it was other niggas that could have been in that car, that could have died for this shit. You know what I mean? Right. Period. Even right now, every time a nigga go out, you ain't guaranteed to come home. Right. Right. But you ready to go. Jump on that stage. Mm -hmm. All that, nigga. Right. And you might get cooked. It might be some niggas that's fuck them bang niggas. Tonight they night. And you ain't worried about it. And I might don't even be tripping. It might be some simple shit that you got into. What? Oh, that nigga with us. Cut we moving. We we he not taking a loss while he with us tonight. Oh uh, yeah. And we might have just ran up against them niggas that cooked us. And you died. You feel me? This is shit that niggas put their they life on. Real life. soldier shit. You feel me? So I mean, you know, big ups to Mac Drake. You know, he, he started this shit. And it's just, it, it's up to niggas like us, real niggas to carry it on. But even, it's not even so much carry it on. As a real nigga, you carry on your bloodline, what you doing. You feel me? It was a doobie before this. <clears throat> Doobie brought what he brought to this because Mac Dre was his partner and I'm fucking with my partner. And based on my partner, this is how far we gonna go with this. And even though he gone, I'm still gonna push like he right here. How would he look at some of the shit that I do? That's why it's certain shit that I'm not gonna do that. It's certain shit I don't give a fuck what another nigga do. He could do that. That's not gonna be on my jacket. I'm not finna snitch. I'm not finna fuck with no ops. And and, and, that, and even all that is bigger than Mac Dre. Go back to my mom and daddy. Nigga, my, I'm not putting that on my mom and daddy and my family and my bloodline. Mm. I ain't, we ain't on no punk shit. Nigga, I'll take a loss before I turn down a fade. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. Period. Whoop me, nigga. You gotta show me you can win. And I ain't scared to take a loss. Period. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that that's the real deal cloth that a real nigga come from and that's what we try to push through our music and that's what we try to push through the alliances that we lock in with based on whoever we fuck with outside of an immediate circle. Because the immediate circle is tied into bloodline. You feel me? And anything I fuck with, me personally, Anything I fuck with outside of bloodline, I gotta answer the bloodline while I'm fucking with it. If something go wrong with me, my mama gonna be like, why the fuck was you fucking with that nigga anyway? Right. Where you know him from? Mm -hmm. I don't know his mama. I don't know his daddy. He ain't from the crest. Where you know him from? Oh, that's one of your friends you found in 2013. <laughs> nigga, you better get washed go to jail, whatever the fuck, you better put yours on the line for one of these niggas you know from 1986, <laughs> 1981, the fuck I know is mama, daddy, whatever the fuck, you run around here with this new ass nigga, what part of the game is that? How can you answer that? You feel me? So, even still, even if it is a nigga that I just met at this point in life, the, the, the structure that I'm gonna put him through before I classify him as a nigga that I really fuck with when I got day ones, I don't give a fuck with my day ones is goofballs. At least I know this is my goofball. Yeah. I can fuck with this nigga and find out he a goofball now. And it might be more costly than a nigga that I knew was a goofball for the last 10, 12, 15 years. At least I know how to deal with him. Right, right. I'm thinking this nigga not no goofball and find out in the clutch. You feel me? So I mean, you know, it, it, 
it's like I say, that's why the, my new album is called Real Before Rap. Because, you know, rap is an illusion. I'm pretty sure plenty of people that watch rap right now, you have been in deal, dealing with rap long enough to see that 80% of rap is an illusion. You know, you got niggas rap this shooter shit, and that ain't what he on. I mean, you know. Water, they fell out of the boat, man. You feel me? Takashi 6 9 Come on, right? Straight switching. You feel me? And that's uh, just on some straight bullshit. And, and, and you, the cool part about just the culture today now is that motherfucker, he's gonna get out of jail, motherfucker's still gonna be kissing his ass. And you know why? Because even if the United States holding the code, he a snitch and we ain't fucking with him. London don't give a fuck about none of that. Yeah. Nigga, Japan don't give a fuck about mm -hmm. none of that. Overseas, that's why that nigga get a 10. How the fuck a nigga snitch and get a $10 million goddamn deal? And that's how you know the, the game is ass backwards. Right. Yeah. It's ass backwards. So understand what you in. So the, the, what would you tell like the, uh, because you, like you said, a lot of these motherfuckers don't understand that it, it's like a movie. Like it's not, it's, it's, like you said, it's an illusion. What would you tell these artists like right now that that be mistaken, you know, the, the, the two worlds, you feel me? Like what kind of fucking- Quit thinking yeah. your mama and daddy is a square. You feel me? Because nine times out of 10, your mama and the, the fruit don't fall too far from the tree. You feel me? That's My good. kids is gonna be bloodline, a part of me and act like how I act. So the closest motherfucker to counsel them on how they act is me. Because how you act is a, is, is a branch off of me. And part of how you act is a part of me that I ain't even told you. It's just in you because it comes from me. So I'm the only one, certain shit that my kids do, they mama, it might don't come from their mama. That's why they mama can't deal with it. Yeah. I can deal with it because it comes from me. Yeah. Hold on, what? Baby mama called me, my kid doing whatever, what? what, what, what? Let me talk to him because that ain't even your field. That ain't what you <laughs> The kid didn't get that from you. Yeah. Let me deal with that. Yeah. You feel me? And when the parent try to guide the, 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 the child, it's because the parent didn't walk that walk and they know where you finna go. And they know if you my bloodline, how you going to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hell yeah. So history. From my mama's side, I got a whole side of my family that don't do nothing half ass. If it's drugs, they go all the way. If it's whatever, they go all the way. So I know, as far as drugs, there's only certain drugs I could do because there's other shit that if I like it, yeah. I ain't gonna give a fuck what you talking about and I'm gonna go all the way. And going all the way on that drug, gonna fuck me up. Oh, for sure. So I gotta know where I came from to know where I'm going. Exactly. How to deal with them demons, you feel me? So right? what, what I would tell the younger culture, Nigga, research is everything. I don't give a fuck if it's some gangster shit. It's the reason why they teach teach you history in school. If you know your history, then you know your future. You know the mistakes that was made already, so you don't make them again. Okay. Being with a nigga like Mac Dre, every, Mac Dre is not God. Yeah. But being close enough to Mac Dre, I was close enough to Mac Dre to see what he did that was good and what he did that was mistakes. Yeah. And I should not make the same mistakes that my OG partner that showed me the game, I should not make the same mistakes as him. I should be able to learn from his mistakes. That's real shit. So, what I would tell the younger generation, learn from the older generation. If you see a motherfucker that glorified drugs and you can see that drugs was his downfall, don't let it be your downfall. If you see an older motherfucker that when he got his money, he went and bought cars and diamonds and all this shit and he ain't got no property, don't let that be your downfall. Learn from anything that you see so you don't have to physically go through that to learn that. You know, when, when I look at some of my uncles and shit, the going to prison shit, Instead of learning from it, I looked at that as nigga, 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 nigga I'm part of the game, nigga, yeah. my time gonna come and when my time come, I'm gonna eat that up and chew it out. Yeah. But my time didn't have to come on that if I didn't have that mentality. For sure. Now, if it just came and you know, that, you, that's what you had to deal with, then you know that's what comes with the game, you gotta deal with that. But learn, learn, learn. Uh, the worst thing in the world is a dumb nigga. The wor and the worst thing in the street is a dumb nigga. Cause it ain't no books on this shit. Other shit, it's books on. You can go read a book on how to be some of these other shit that niggas is trying to be. 
You were in the street, nigga. Ain't no book for in the street. So you better learn from your OGs. You better sit and listen to some of these dope fiends that done been there. The nigga had money and now he a dope fiend. You better listen and figure out what the fuck his mistake was. A nigga that was on and now he's nothing. Nigga, don't think he nothing. Listen to that nigga. That's why God got the nigga still here to tell you. So, I mean, that's what it is. You feel me? For sure, yeah. Period. God ain't letting niggas make it through some of these wars for nothing. Right. You know, some of these niggas that made, like what the Cuddy say, he got sent to the pen and made it through the shit to tell me to take eight years. Now, why you think he said that? You feel me? Nigga, that was real shit. Even though I wasn't stupid, Anybody was gonna have to tell me to take eight years when I looked at what the fuck they really talking about. Yeah, right. But he was there to assure, in case I was on some dumb shit, Cuddy, I think I could beat it. I ain't, they ain't got me on nothing. I seen the paperwork. This shit, I'm not finna go up against these people. Hell no. You feel me? Yeah, so yeah. I mean, if I'm gonna tell a young nigga anything, Nigga, listen and learn from what came before you because it came before you for a reason. The shit got put here before you for you to learn from it. Right. You feel me? Hell yeah. Um, I don't think I don't think I didn't give it. Uh, I got a chance to tell him I forgot. But Kilo, I'm going to just tell you. I'm going to give you the roses because I didn't get a chance to tell Kilo. You feel me? Even if it, Mac Dre was here, I would have said the same thing. But um, Y'all had a big impact on me coming up too when I'm listening to the music and shit. Cause like, you feel me? Me as a young nigga, I was feel me wild and shit. Y'all meant something to me, you feel me? I'm growing up, you feel me, in the, in the hood or whatever. That shit, y'all niggas, y'all music um, created some of the best times in my life, you feel me? Whether it be with my partners, my family. Every time I listen to certain music, bruh, I, I remember back in times, even when my kids <coughs> are not here no more, R.P. Mac Rick, you feel me? Free G Bundles. Like, my family, bro, like, I didn't have the greatest times off y'all music, you feel me? Like, that appreciate shit means it, something, like, for yeah, real, though, like, cutting, like, like, for real, bro. Like, I, like, before I even met you, I felt like I knew you, you know what I mean? Like, you, is it, you probably hear that all the time, like, you nah, no, the reason music, why, you, you know why I can relate to that? Nigga, I've been through that. Right. I felt the same way. Nigga, uh, Ice Cube, a two, nigga, my first rap name was Ice Dude. <laughs> Jerry Curl and everything. Cool, Jerry Curl and everything, bro. For real. If you had Ice Cube sitting here, I would tell him and Easy E the same motherfucking thing. I would tell Too Short the same motherfucking thing. I would tell Scarface the same motherfucking thing. So I can relate to exact. I'm happy that I can touch a motherfucking life like yours, like the way the niggas who came before me touched my life. Yeah. The way a Ice Cube, a Too Short, a Easy E, a, a, a Scarface touched my life, bro. Right. I wouldn't rap the way I rap had not these niggas touched. I wouldn't move the way I move in the street. Had yeah. you know, and these niggas I don't even know. I just know you through your music. Right. You feel me? So I feel you. I, I respect that. Yeah. For real. Hundred percent. Sugar Wolf was a household name for the bro. old days. Hundred percent. That, that album was classic. I remember bumping that at family parties, bro. A bunch of Mexican people slapping the Sugar Wolf album. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And I am a hit with Mexican women. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> yeah. For real though, my nigga. For real. Yeah. 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 It's all real though. You feel me? What you think? What song was the most? Um, impact for it, the most influential that you made, that you you felt like that right now, moved. right now, in no smoking money. Well, I mean, yeah. you better not never say nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. I would slap your head. Yeah. I thought you were gonna make up some robot shit that you made up in. Oh, in the face. It came through. That in no smoking money. I done been to shows, right? Ah, and those no getting money. And I, 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 was, I was a day for I thought he was gonna make up stuff. You heard it? You, you know the new you, song. Y'all just listen to it. I put the. I, you know what? I never got off shit, work right? at this time. And it'd be motherfuckers that at I my don't even job. got endo smoking money on the show, goddamn shit. And they ask me. They'd be like, do endo smoking money. I'd be like, motherfucker, that shit. Oh, I'm trying to get all this new shit. <laughs> right? I, that shit ain't even on the show that. But what about Boosie? I go get it out the car. Right. Right. I'm just, 
in the smoking one mouth that I went to jail on that. I said, you know what? Do we make do we made that? Do we made that? I ain't gonna uh, they got me for nothing. What they get me? This is even in my section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Crazy what the fuck did they get me? The crazy shit to know shit. A niggas. dose. Look and these type of niggas I deal and, with. And if look, you can't deal with it. I want hang you to take it. Up, bitch. I want you to take it in small doses, or that shit gonna prove lethal. <laughs> you all need, bitch. Narcotics, small doses, uh. or it's gonna prove lethal. Mm-hmm. You know what that means? Yeah, On the mob, bitch. Hell yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Actually, I'm, I'm from the P. Bird, the bird is the other part of the V. Man. Yeah, I'm an OG me. from Vallejo. 1968. A cougar, a Mustang, a Falcon. Come on. A, 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 what you want, a Chevy? You better want huh? a Chevy. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Look, but I went Cougar Mustang Falcon. I know you did, huh? but I'm, it's, I'm it's seeing out. I'm in the 60s. Yeah, I'm seeing out. Man, then, okay. the car, look, look, look you, you come here you up under the cut. Yeah. Driving man. a car from the 70s. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and on the mob, look, look, look. Mob look, shot. Look, mob look, shot look, shot look how they did you. <laughs> Yeah, they, see, that's they, in San Francisco. We're gonna yeah, go look yeah. that up. We're gonna take that picture over because no. it's ratted out up in that jank. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's it's what, ratted, it's ratted that, 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 that's what you hmm. had to go through. It's ratted right infested. I get it's it out right of It's ratted infested. Ah. Right infested. Ah. Hey, like I say. Yeah, hey, that's nigga, why you, nigga, that's nigga, why you, you ain't never been through nothing, huh. you ain't gonna be nothing. Hey, and if you don't go through nothing, nigga, you're gonna be worth shit. Come on, yeah. You know what I mean? What I lack in and what I lack in personality, I, what I lack in substance, I make up for in personality. Therefore, I'm rich. And although I may not be enthused with last season's performance, as a wise guy, I know another season awaits. And with my new season, I plan to pursue the game with a passion unparalleled to anything ever displayed by Damn. mankind. And Damn. I plan to kick a bitch in the ass and never give a pass. Yeah. And don't pursue that to mankind. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah, bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, Shoot those stories, man. And we out of here. Yarra. <laughs>